cheap SLR cameras, sub $20 that you should consider. Check it out. So you guys, why am I bringing this to you right now? These are 80s, 90s cameras. And as we know from YouTube and from the last two years, people are super hyped about cameras from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And an AE1s, your Pentax K1000s, your Leicas, your contacts from back in the day. People are going crazy, or they were going crazy, about buying those cameras. Times have changed, times move on. I don't know if you've noticed, but recently, the prices of these old 90s cameras, this is 1985, but the 19, late 80s and the 1990s SLRs are going up, and here's why. These old uh, SLR cameras that were created after this camera, this is the flagship, the Minolta Maxim 7000 or the 7000A, this was the flagship, you guys. This was the one that launched everything. It was the boat, the one that started, the OG, the GOAT. The Maxim 7000 was the first camera to have an inbuilt onboard autofocus system. And it is wonderful. Look at this beast. It reminds me of the earlier BMW M3s. It reminds me of those tag watches. And this got me to rekindle my love affair with 35 mil. Listen to this. Oh my goodness. It sounds like the Terminator moving his knee. I love it. This camera is dealt. So this camera released in 1985, the Minolta Maxim 7000, contains an autofocus system. It was a dedicated autofocus sensors. It allowed for faster and more accurate focusing, making it easier for photographers to capture sharp images. What does that mean? Everyone before this, they were manually focusing. This bad boy, boom, did the focusing for you. That means you can get sharper images quicker. That's why this was the flagship. Uh, it's not the reason I love it, but it's the reason it paved the way for future SLR cameras. The point of this video, you guys, is things move on. Trends, fashion, all that kind of stuff, it moves on. It goes around in a big circle. And right now what we're seeing is people falling back in love with these 90s, 80s, early 2000 SLR cameras. And here's why. This is the Nikon N65. It's a Nikon. It takes the Nikon lenses, the lenses from prior, the F mount, and the lenses from current, all my Nikon digital cameras, my DSLRs. This camera takes those lenses. lens comes off. Now, if you look at this lens, this mount here, see this little screw mount? That means I can use this lens with the older style autofocus lenses, or I can use this camera, older style autofocus lenses that I use for my DSLRs, my Nikon F4, my Nikon F100, my Nikon F5. And this camera was 10 bucks, boom. The Nikon N65, it has a pop-up flash that pops up when I need it or when the camera thinks it needs it. LCD screen at the top displays everything I need to know and the on switch is exactly the same or kind of the same as my Nikon F100. Displays everything I need to know at the top on the screen there. Right now the E says that it's empty, no film. We know that. It's the same with all my other Nikon SLRs. The Canon Rebel range, the EOS, the Rebel, the XSN. This camera was released in the late 90s and it is amazing. Autofocus, uh, through the lens metering, multiple focus points, exposure control, aperture priority, shutter priority. This camera takes the lenses off of my DSLR um, Canon cameras also, so I can interchange them. Yeah, it's a little bit bulky and a little bit heavy, but let me tell you about this camera. It does everything you want it to do. I'm all right tonight. And people are falling in love with these early 2000s, late 90s cameras. They cost no money and it's easy to shoot. Here's the thing. If you pick up a Canon AE-1, if you shoot a Pentax Super Program, 
those cameras need a little bit of love, a little bit of understanding to know how to shoot them. And I love it and it's fine and let's do it. But these, these older automatic SLRs allow you to shoot film, but with the beauty and the ease of using modern technology. Portra 400 is almost $20. All those films, almost $20. Plus, you want to shoot Portra 400, you want to shoot HP5, you want to get the results that those other people on Instagram, etc. get. That's not while I'm rocking it, I'm rocking it to create family pictures and to create memories for myself, but let me talk about it. If you shoot your expensive film through those older cameras and you don't get your exposure or your focusing right, pictures are not going to come out as good as you like. These 90s cameras. Nobody wanted them before. So they were being sold and still being sold relatively cheaply. But they're gonna create results for you using 35 mil. Everybody switching to Digicam. I have a bunch of them, I love them. Specifically the CCD sensor type. Uh, this old HP bad boy was like free in a bundle. CCD sensors, they look wonderful. No money, good to practice. But I don't get that wonderful silky smooth feeling that I get when I shoot 35. If you shoot these newer, fully automatic SLR cameras that cost less than 10 bucks, less than 20 bucks, you're not gonna ruin that film stock. You're gonna get 100% out of the film stock that you use and you're gonna get great results. And then when you're good at what you're doing, you can then switch to your Canon AE-1, your Leicas, your contacts, whatever you wanna switch to. Just know that these auto exposure controls, this aperture priority, this shutter priority, these program modes, these are gonna help you shoot your film stock and get great results. You guys, here's my point. This is four cameras. I do not need another camera. But as we move towards new trends and as we move towards expensive film stocks, these cameras can guarantee you better results with your film stock. If you're paying 15 bucks for Portra 400, in some cases 20. 15 for developing, 20 sometimes if you wanna enhance your pictures and then you're gonna go ahead and spend extra money on prints. If you mess up that film stock, if your light meter's not right, if the battery runs out, if you just have a bad day, your experience with that K1000, with that AE1, with that super program even, or with those older Malolta cameras, it's not gonna be as good. With these 90s cameras and the early 2000s cameras, you get full use of that film stock. You get to experience that film stock, but you can guarantee those images that come out are gonna be dope. If you're shooting street, you better guarantee that these guys are gonna focus nice and quick and boom, you're gonna get those shots. Yeah, they don't have the bulky metallic feel, but I kinda love this plastic BPA vibe. Dig it. Reminds me of those early BMW M3s, the Audi AE Quattro, the uh, Audi GT Coupe, actually. It is a whole new ball game, you guys. And as we move towards the next iteration of film photography with the newer film stocks and stuff that are coming out, you can guarantee you're gonna see people shooting more and more of these older yet newer technology SLR cameras. So if you can get hold of one, don't ignore it at the thrift store. Get it. Don't ignore it in your mum's garage. Store it. But remember to take the batteries out, clean them, replace them, and at least give the camera a service before you use it. I mean, I have to say though, out of all of them, the 1985 Minolta Maxim 7000 is still gonna always be my favorite, but it is the slowest and it is the heaviest, but it looks dope. Hey, thanks for stopping in, you guys. Thanks for checking out these 90s cameras. I look forward to shooting with you on the streets. Show me some of your images. Click subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Boom.